I'm here with Michael, aka Misanthrope, a DJ producer from Germany. He has an amazing kind of way of producing, like a kind of unique way for me, a drum and bass. I'm really happy to be with you today. Uh, how are you doing? Not too bad, thank you very much and thanks for the introduction, sounds, sounds promising already. You're a producer for over 15 years, right? Yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I was wondering, uh, how did you fall in love with drum and bass? It goes back to the, um, to the I would say, mid-90s, end-90s, I think like um, the Mannheim area, which I grew up, was pretty big for drum and bass. And um, my first connection was like going you know, as a 16, 17 year old guy, you know, going out, you know, and um, it wasn't really allowed for us to go in the club, but there were illegal rapes and stuff, and um, we got in contact with that, and um, yeah, that's how I just um, fell in love with it. How do you see the evolution of German bass since you have started, like? Well, how, how can I describe I try to make music like, um, like I was back in the day when I just listened to drum bass or music in general, I wanted to be surprised, you know, and um, that's something I'm still searching in drum and bass, you know, stuff that surprises me, and that's something that never changed in a way, because there's always something coming uh, which is like, wow, what's that, you know, and um, I mean, back in the day it was like concentrated on one country, and now it's like worldwide, you know, and it's um, the internet makes it bigger, it's like, it's crazy, you know, like, Drum bass grew from like a small niche product to just a huge thing somehow. Ben, and you also play a huge role through your level. How did you start this uh, project? Well, um, I mean, I just met Flo in a German um, internet forum um, back in the day because we both were like in the in the beginning posting tunes in that forum. It was an internet forum about drum, drum and bass, and you could post your tunes and the people would judge it, you know, and just play it probably or something like that. And there we met and um, we just thought about, yeah, collabing and stuff. And then we just um, saw like, okay, we have similar likes, you know, and just um, like what we do and stuff. And so it grew. In a way. How could you describe the artistic direction of No Signal? It's really hard to describe, to be honest, because we want to be experimental. We want to do some fresh music. We want to do stuff that um, you don't hear everywhere you know and um, we want to have like a niche kind of um, position but still we want a music you we want to feature music you can dance to for example, for example you know but still it should have like that kind of different twist to it yeah for sure and i think that's something that we also hear through your two last album analog and the universe uh, you uh, bring a kind of unique uh, way of uh, producing drum and bass. And I was kind of curious, uh, what's next after two masterpieces like that? Honestly, I don't know. But, <laughs> well, it's like, I, what I usually do is not uh, looking back, you know? I mean, I'm, I'm not the kind of person who just repeats itself, you know? Like, um, just... You know, just because something was successful and it worked in the past doesn't mean it works in the future. You know? That is why I'm just searching for different kind of things. At the moment, I'm like, well, I'm doing a lot of Max MSP, which is like a very special program where you just don't really work in a program in itself. You just work in a modular environment where you just code. Okay. It's code based, actually. It's weird, but it's just a different approach. And then, and I find it quite interesting at the moment, and um, let's see where it takes me. I mean, um, the, the two years during COVID just made me like um, producing so many music. I, I think I have to release some stuff now, you know? And um, I think that can be singles and EPs and some, something, and um, that's what I've gonna do next I guess. Now uh, let's talk about uh, tonight. So you're here for the studio event. Uh, last time you were, uh, you were played in Paris I think it was at Getting Step. Yes. And uh, the time before was at the uh, Dream Nation Festival. Uh, oh, yeah. Do you enjoy Paris? Yeah definitely. I just really love it. I mean it's, it's, it's funny because in the beginning when I started I just got bookings all over Europe. 
but there was never a booking in France. Really? Yeah, I, I guess it was too early. But I think there were a couple of parties going on. And then um, I think I just played the first time in France at Jungle Juice parties. Oh, yeah, know? old time, and, nice um, times. <laughs> yeah, fun. It was fun, you know. And I, then I just really, I, I always enjoyed um, f um, French culture, you know, everything around it. It just, it, it's always about style and good living, you know. And um, that's why I just like it here. People are friendly, they just enjoy my music, which is great. Um, so, um, yeah, I always love it. What can fans expect from your DJ set tonight? Well, I think it's um, it's, it's the first time I play all Misanthrope's set. There's no tunes from other producers, which is, you know, in a traditional DJ set, you would probably play like different tunes and stuff. That's, but I want to do something different. And as I said, like I have so many tunes. It's not like um, only from the last two years, I just, I have so many tunes and I just want to play them, you know? I, I have the impression the variety is big enough to make like a 60 minute set go. You know? I think this is kind of a goal also for many producers to yeah. have a DJ set full of your yeah. productions and IDs. Yeah, and also... Will you play some IDs tonight? Yeah, of course, a lot. I, I would nice. say like 80% or something like that. Really? Yeah, it's oh. all fresh. I mean, of course, a few classics, of course, from myself. I, say like those are classic. We need so, we need that too. When I just started out I was always thinking like about that moment because I really want to do it and it, uh, it took a long time but uh, well I finally made it. <laughs> That's perfect. I can't wait to see you play tonight. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much for the interview. It was very really nice to have you here. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, I can't wait to play tonight. No, really cool. It's gonna be awesome. Can't yeah. wait to. Yeah.